some of my earliest memories of music were, you know, my dad playing Hank Williams and the Beach Boys, and then I think my sister playing piano. I don't know, a lot of the, the early like sing-along stuff, you know, like that would come on TV. Definitely the, the Back to the Future scene where Michael J. Fox plays the Johnny Be Good. That was a pretty important thing I saw as a, <laughs> as a kid. <laughs> Took to the guitar around 10 years old after kind of Green Day came out. I started taking guitar lessons with a really great guitar player named uh, Galen Ryan. My dad and him took me to my first festival when I was 12 and we started in the guitar contest. Going to all these festivals and seeing all these musicians that you looked up to and then realizing like, hey, we're, we're jamming together and, you know, it's getting better and better each time and somewhere in there it just really clicked that, you know, this is what I want to do with my life. Growing up outside of the bluegrass hotbeds, like, you know, I didn't grow up in the, in the mountains or anything, it was always kind of like this kind of identity crisis of trying to be this coastal kid that was trying to play bluegrass. And then I went to college for jazz guitar. When I got to college, they were like, oh man, you sound too bluegrassy. And then the summer, and go back to festivals and all the bluegrass guys, oh man, you sound too jazzy. So it's it never quite, you know, rooted in any, you know, one tradition. What makes bluegrass bluegrass? Uh, man, that depends on who you ask nowadays. Traditional roots of bluegrass, I guess, come from the Scotch-Irish fiddle tunes mixing with a lot of the African traditions that came over into America and rural South, just everybody mixing cultures and musics. Bill Monroe would be the guy that kind of synthesized all that. The high lonesome sound is what he calls it. Jazz kind of developed, it was, you know, Dixieland and Swing and Ragtime, and that switched over into Bebop eventually, and a lot of people are, you know, that's not jazz, you know, that, and, you know, now of course it is, just because that's the evolution of the tradition. I think more things are bluegrass than just the traditional definition. We can have electric instruments, we can have all kinds of things now. But, you know, as this folk genre is developing, what is and what is not bluegrass is a very, you know, subjective thing to talk about nowadays. My experience with the, the Richmond music scene as a bluegrass player has been awesome. I found it to be really supportive, even for people that aren't necessarily bluegrass fans. There's just a lot of people who appreciate good art and good music in town. You know, this isn't a huge city, but we have you know, a great metal scene, great jazz scene, great rock scene, great hip hop scene. I, like, everything's great. been 
very inspiring. Dream. 